combination of lemon syrup and Italian style flour gives this coconut lemon cake an incredibly moist and delicate texture. It's the coconut cream that I added and toasted coconut on top that makes this dessert really unique. So, cream together two sticks of unsalted butter, one and a half cups of granulated sugar, four large eggs, one at a time, and I'm going to add the zest of two lemons. So there, that looks good. And I'm gonna keep this on very low while I sift the dry ingredients. Now, oftentimes you'll see me just whisking for sifting, but this cake I want really, really delicate. So I'm going to sift the flour first, measure it, then sift it again with the leavening and the salt. So the recipe calls for two and three quarters cups of double zero flour. Double zero flour will give you a very, very light crumb and it will give a different texture cake. So two and three quarters. So sift through a sieve. Now, if you didn't sift, look what you might get lumps in your batter. So make sure you get every single lump out. And now we're gonna remeasure into another bowl, the two and three quarters cups. We'll see if there's anything left over. I think we're gonna have some left over. So I am glad I sifted twice. There. And now one tablespoon of Italian baking powder. That has a little bit of a flavor to it and a pinch of sea salt. Now sift those ingredients together. And we are ready with our dry ingredients. And it's time to fold the flour into the mixer. Mm, it smells so good with the lemon. Okay, so we have also a half a cup of coconut cream. So add in three batches the flour, a little bit of coconut cream, the flour, the coconut cream, and then the rest of the flour, and the rest of the coconut cream. There we have a beautiful batter. Now we have a bunt pan, all buttered very nicely, and we put the batter right into the buttered bun pan. Your oven should be heated to 325 degrees. This cake gets a really beautiful golden brown color. When you turn it out of the pan, it is darker than you would expect. Spread this evenly, just pop it into your oven. The cake will bake for about 45 minutes, and then you must cool it in the pan for another 30 minutes or so on a rack. So here's the cake. It really is a beautiful color, and I know it's gonna be a beautiful shape. Uh, the last thing you do before you turn it out is to completely soak it with a lemon syrup. So it's a third of a cup of lemon juice, fresh lemon juice, a quarter of a cup of sugar, you can use extra fine or you could use just granulated sugar and a half a cup of water. Now it seems like, you know, very, very wet, but it does extraordinary things to this cake. So we want to brush it on all over the top of the cake and it will drip down through the cake and really make it more moist than it is right now. And you do this over a period of a half an hour, just keep brushing it. So let that soak in, do it again, you know, every few minutes, just until you use up all of the syrup. So right before serving, dollops of whipped cream right on the crown of the cake. And we have some coconut toasted lightly in the oven. It really takes just a couple minutes in a 300 oven to toast the coconut. So each slice will get some cream and some coconut in addition to this delectable cake. And sprinkle with the coconut. Mm, so pretty. Perfect for any occasion or no occasion whatsoever. Really nice. Would you like to see how it slices? Just use a serrated knife. You can see what a great texture the cake has. 
What a beautiful color. I think you're going to find that this will be one of your favorite cakes for a long, long time. Enjoy. Chewy, crispy, and golden brown. These coconut cookies are chock full of coconut, and they're easy to make and actually simply addictive. In our test kitchens here, people say it's their favorite cookie of recent times. So in the bowl of an electric mixer, fitted with your paddle, cream, one cup of butter, unsalted butter, that's two sticks, with a half a cup plus two tablespoons of granulated sugar, and three quarters of a cup of light brown sugar. If your butter's at room temperature, it will cream very quickly. And one egg, one large egg. I'm gonna let that cream a little bit. I can hear the uh, granulated sugar just uh, kind of crunching in the bowl. I want that to be pretty well mixed in. So one and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour plus two tablespoons. You might wonder why we have random two tablespoons of this or that. It's because we have reduced a much larger recipe for the home cook. A nice pinch of sea salt and one teaspoon of baking soda. Whisk that together. And now that's creamy and I don't hear any more of that granular sound. So there, now add your egg. So now add about half the flour four cups of coconut chips, half the coconut. And the rest of the flour. And the rest of the coconut. I think it's well mixed. Looks very good and have your cookie sheets ready, lined with parchment. It's an inexpensive, effective liner for all your baking needs, and you don't have to wash the pan so often. It really is a time saver. Now, very easy to scoop with an ice cream scoop. This is about one and a half tablespoons. We want to put five of these on a sheet. So scoop and flatten. They do spread, so five to a sheet. And you're going to love the taste of these cookies. Now, best to chill these in the refrigerator for at least 20 minutes. And then we're going to flatten them and bake them. So these are quite chilled. Just put a little bit of flour on the bottom of the glass. And yeah, they flatten out nicely. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees. And these are going to bake until golden brown, approximately 14 to 16 minutes. And this recipe makes two dozen cookies. Now look at the great color and the great size and the thinness of these coconut cookies. Put them onto a wire rack to cool and then either eat, which is my suggestion, or you can stack like this for a party. There's a little piece of waxed paper between each cookie. These freeze very nicely. And they are really great with a tropical drink like a pina colada. I suggest keeping a ready supply of coconut chips in your kitchen because your family's gonna ask you to make these cookies again and again and again. Enjoy. When I first tasted this amazing coconut dessert, I knew I had to get the recipe. Today joining me is Michelle Goldsmith, who is the pastry chef at Nobu 57. And she created this unusual, refreshing, frozen dessert. So um, the cake first. So you want to tell me what to do or should? Sure, okay. sure. So why don't you start by two eggs into the mixing bowl. Okay. And then we'll add a third cup of sugar. Okay. And now you have dry ingredients too, yes. of course. Yes, so uh, we're gonna let this whip and come up to like three or four times in volume. Okay. So in the meantime, we can go ahead and add one and a half teaspoons of the baking powder to three quarter cup and two tablespoons of AP flour. And we'll give this a little whisk. Okay. 
Um, so then we'll go ahead and add a quarter cup of the grapeseed oil to a quarter cup of the coconut oil. So grapeseed oil, so no mm -hmm. butter in this cake. I actually prefer an oil-based sponge oh. Oh, over okay. a butter-based oh, okay. sponge. Yeah. So grapeseed oil and then a quarter of a cup plus two tablespoons of coconut milk. Coconut milk has a very, very light flavor, but there's a nuttiness to it. And then what other coconut is, is in this cake? So we also have a quarter cup of desiccated coconut, which will fold in at the Unsweetened. end. Unsweetened. Unsweetened. Okay. Yeah. So okay, you can take so. it all the way down and add coconut oil. All of it? Uh, no, a little oh. by little. Okay. And then, and then go ahead with the coconut milk. I prefer at room temperature. I find that it spreads easier in the pan. And it'll finish there. So now we can turn it off and... Would you use the beater to mix in or? The best thing to do would be for if you'd like to sift it over and then I'll fold as you okay, sift. Okay, I'll do that for you. So that way we don't lose anything. So it's good to have an assistant. Always. Perfect. Good. I recommend adding the flour first before the coconut so you can really make sure that all the flour is properly incorporated. So it's a very little bit of coconut, a quarter of a cup. Yes. Desiccated, Yeah, just to coconut. give it a little extra mm -hmm. coconut flavor. All right, and then we'll go ahead and pour it into our 10-inch pan. Now, is that spring form, buttered and lined with paper? Too? Yeah, okay. yeah, it is. You don't flour it? No, 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 it's not necessary. Because of all the oil, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. And make sure your oven is preheated to 350 degrees. For how many minutes? Between 20 and 25. Oh, really? Turn it once, and then mm -hmm. it's ready when we um, touch the center and it kind of bounces back a bit. Set your timer. So we've cooled down the sponge, and then because life is not perfect, you want to just trim this a little bit to get a nice, even, flat layer. OK, so we have a yuzu syrup here, which is basically made with sugar, water, yuzu juice, and coconut milk. Oh, good. If yuzu juice isn't available, uh, lemon works perfectly. How much will you use? It'll drink a nice amount. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay. So I'll do this for you, and then um, you're melting what over yes. there? Yes. So then we're going to put the coconut crunch on the bottom. So I'm melting down some white chocolate here in a double boiler. Okay. So you want it wet, but not soaking. Yeah. All right. So we're going to add some tahini. If you want to go ahead and add oh, the tahini. tahini. To what? To, to this? the white chocolate, yeah. Oh. That's an odd combination. So it is, probably. So tahini is... <laughs> it's a sesame paste, white yes. sesame. Okay. So we'll add a third cup of puffed rice cereal. Uh, puffed rice cereal? Yes. That you have for breakfast? Yes. Ah. And then we'll also add a quarter cup of... Desiccated coconut. Mm -hmm. And then I'll go ahead and zest half a lemon. Pinch of salt. And half a zest of lemon. Great. Fragrant lemon. Yeah, fantastic. Okay, so we want to flip this over. No, yeah, perfect, there we go. And then uh, just spread this over. It's actually a lot easier to do this when the cake is cold. You just take that to the edges. So if you don't have time to make this, just buy some halva and grind it up. <laughs> <laughs> and add some cereal and you'll be fine. <laughs> mm. You finish. Sure. You so put this back in the freezer. Yeah, so we okay. will go ahead and wrap this. Wrap freezer. it with plastic, put it in the freezer for until it's frozen solid. Yeah, maybe a good hour or so. Okay. So now this is frozen solid. Yeah, it's frozen. And so you can pick it up and just put it right back in there, yeah. Okay, into your spring form pan. Mm -hmm. Soaked with the coconut milk. Right, so the coconut soak is side up and the crunch is side down. And you have an acetate here to it'll give us a really nice crisp edge oh, okay. at the end. That's your pineapple. Yeah, so this is roasted pineapple puree. Basically what we do is take pineapple, peel it, core it, cut it into small pieces, and then add a little sugar syrup and vanilla mm. beans. Mm. So good, so good. <laughs> and then we roast in the oven for two hours. So it's about a, a little bit more than a cup. Yes. So then we'll put this back in the freezer, and then once this is set up, we put the mousse on top. So now we're making a semifredo out of white chocolate? Yes, it's a coconut semifredo, yeah, oh, okay. with white chocolate. So two egg whites mm -hmm. beaten with a third of a cup plus one tablespoon of sugar. Yes. While you're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and bloom our two sheets of silver strength gelatin, cold water. 
Okay, so then we have a one and a half cups of coconut milk. So we'll heat that with a half a cup of desiccated coconut and then a zest of one lemon. Mm, and this is white chocolate. Yeah, for this recipe, you really want to stick with a 35%. Anything lower, we have less cocoa butter and the mousse is going to come out a little bit softer. Just bring it to a boil. You're going to pour that over the white chocolate? Yeah, we're going to strain it out over the white chocolate. The gelatin is nice and soft. So that's one sheet of gelatin? It is two okay. sheets. Okay, how about that? That looks great. Okay. This is just coming to a boil. Turn it off. Add the gelatin to dissolve. And then strain this over the chocolate. Oh, you're straining the coconut out? Yeah, we just oh. took all the flavor. And then strain this very, very well. And then what we do is actually keep this leftover coconut lemon mixture and then add a little bit more coconut, a little bit of sugar, and dehydrate it, and that becomes a coconut crisp garnish. Mm. Okay, so we just very, very gently mix this from the center out. We want the gelatin to begin to work its magic powers before adding in the meringue and the cream. This into yeah. there? Yeah, go okay. ahead. And oftentimes I'll switch to the whisk in this beginning oh, part just okay. so we can avoid lumps, but I'm really folding. And then we'll go ahead and add in our whipped cream. Oh, whipped cream. Yeah, we have three very different textures, so we kind of want to balance everything out very gently. Mm, and now just that would be a delicious dessert. Yeah, this on its own, yeah. just in a cup. Mm -hmm. Just serve with some fresh fruit or something even. Just, we can just pour it right on top. Yes. So now you can see why you need a 10 inch springform pan. And back to the freezer. Yes, okay. back to the freezer. So the dessert is out of the freezer and look at that. <gasps> Extraordinary. And then you can decorate it however you want. You show me. Absolutely. You're so artistic. Okay, so for me, I like decoration to be super simple. So I would just do some roasted pineapple, maybe a little coconut flake. That looks good enough for me. That is so beautiful. And then the coconut. Yeah, so we have this coconut sorbet. I know you are a big fan of the coconut, so we'll go ahead and scoop that up. That is spectacular. And it certainly is one masterpiece that shows off coconut in all its tropical glory. Thank you very much, Michelle, for, for having me. taking time out of your busy kitchen schedule to come and show us how to create this magnificent dessert. And I'm going to eat it myself. Please. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. If you find yourself frequently reaching for a certain chocolate and chewy coconut bar, you're going to love this irresistible coconut crunch cake. It has a triple dose of coconut and a sinfully good bittersweet chocolate sauce drizzled on top. Cream one stick of butter with quarter of a cup of coconut oil. It's a nice shiny white solid oil, almost like a shortening. So add that to your butter. So cream your butter and your coconut oil together with one cup of granulated sugar. So you're basically substituting coconut oil for butter. So coconut oil is soaring in popularity. It's pressed from raw coconut, and it's an unrefined oil with a subtle nutty tropical flavor. It's uh, also a great vegan substitute for butter in baked goods. So this is quite a bit whiter than it would have been if you had used all butter. Now add to this three large eggs, And we'll turn this down low while we get our dry ingredients. One and a half cups of all-purpose flour, a half a teaspoon of baking powder, quarter teaspoon baking soda, and three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. So baking soda, baking powder, salt. That's your dry ingredients. Then we're going to add the dry ingredients with one can, which is 5.4 ounces of cream of coconut, which is a thick, smooth liquid made from fresh coconuts, generally sweetened with sugar, and one teaspoon of vanilla. And I'm just going to whisk this up a little bit to get rid of some of those lumps. So there, we're now ready 
to mix the dry and add some of this coconut cream, the rest of the dry ingredients, and the rest of the coconut cream. So here is our lovely bottom layer of this two-layer cake and pour this batter right into the bottom of a 10-inch springform pan that's been well buttered and well floured. Springform because it will allow you to release this very dense, heavy cake once it's baked. So just spread your batter nice and evenly in the springform pan and then mix up the top layer, which is our coconut layer. Two large egg whites, just beat with a whisk until frothy. Add an eighth of a teaspoon of salt, two teaspoons of vanilla, one whole can. Now here's something else that we're adding of sweetened condensed milk. One of my favorite of all things, which is why I never, ever, ever have it in my house. If you put a can of sweetened condensed milk in your refrigerator, you will find yourself spooning it into your mouth every now and then for something sweet. So train yourself never to open a can unless you're going to use the whole can like this recipe. Now one can of condensed milk is 14 ounces. And to this nice syrupy mixture, add three cups of sweetened coconut shredded which is available in pretty much every grocery store. So this gets stirred together and poured over the top of the batter. Easy. Mm, boy, does that look good. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees and bake this until a toothpick comes out clean. That's gonna take about one hour because this is a dense cake. If you find that it's browning too quickly, just cover it with a little piece of foil, like a little tent. Set your timer. Once removed from the pan, cut this cake into wedges. I find using a serrated knife is good. And you don't need a big wedge because this is very rich. And put it on your plate. And I think everyone will opt for the delicious chocolate sauce, which you can sort of puddle around the plate or drizzle over the top, whatever you prefer. A perfect pairing of chocolate and coconut. I do hope you enjoyed learning how to bake some of my favorite coconut recipes today. Thanks for tuning in and please join me for the next episode of Martha Bakes. Cream two sticks of unsalted butter with a quarter cup of confectioner's sugar until fluffy. Mix in two cups of all-purpose flour and one quarter teaspoon of salt. Beat until just combined. Stir in two cups sweetened flaked coconut. Scoop dough and roll into one inch balls. Place two inches apart on a baking sheet. Bake at 350 degrees until golden, 15 to 20 minutes. Roll in confectioner's sugar and let cool completely before serving.